replace walls, it is easiest to do so in a floor plan, so let's switch to the first floor plan. To see more detail, we will turn on the thin line view. Let's also choose fine as our detail option. Walls are placed using the location line as a reference. This option chooses which part of the wall will be placed over the line we draw. As you can see, as we create this wall on the edge of the slab, we are drawing where we want the wall center line to be since this is our location line. If we switch the location line to finish face exterior, we are now drawing where we want the outside of the wall to be located. Once the wall is placed, we can select it and give it a new location line in its instance properties. However, this does not change the wall placement. It only changes the location line for future wall edits. For example, if we switch the wall's orientation, this uses the new location line, not the initial one used to place the wall. There are other instance properties that also help modify our walls. We'll use an elevation view for this example to see things more clearly. The base constraint allows us to choose where the bottom of the wall will attach to. The height is still set to the default value of 20 feet. We can also give the base an offset if we want it to begin in between levels. Next, we can change the top constraint from unconnected which uses a specific height to a chosen level. As with the base constraint, we can also give the top constraint an offset from its assigned level. To change a wall structure, we must edit its type properties. In the structure dialog, we can see every layer that comprises the selected wall, as well as the function of the layer, what it is made of, and how thick it is. We can add new layers, delete layers, or edit layers. Let's give the outside layer a new material. Change the old material from brick to wood shakes. Here we can also change the surface pattern if we want. After selecting OK, this new material now appears in our model. Since we did not create a new type, let's return the material to its proper selection. Now, notice the option of wrapping. This option is also available in the previous dialog. By selecting wrapping, we are choosing what material to use for the ends of the walls. Now, notice that the brick is wrapped all the way around the wall, including the sides and top. By using the interior as a wrapping, the interior material wraps around the edges of the wall. To add design features to the wall, we must once again edit its structure.
However, notice that the Sweeps and Reveals option is grayed out. To change this, preview the wall and change its view. Now let's add a sweep, or an architectural extrusion that runs along the wall. Select Add to create a default sweep. From here, select a new profile, or load one in from the library. Now, select a new material for the sweep. Now, we can choose a distance measured from a base location where we want the sweep to be located. When we are done setting the properties and adding sweeps, select OK. Our new sweep will now be displayed in our preview wall. We can also see the new sweep on our walls in the model. By repeating this process, we can add additional sweeps to a wall or edit existing sweeps. When finished setting the properties of the additional sweeps, we can select OK and the new sweeps will be displayed within our model. To add reveals or reliefs that extend across the face of a wall, we can once again edit the wall's structure. By undergoing the same process we used to create sweeps, we can create reveals at specific distances from a base location. After selecting OK, the reveals will be displayed along with the sweeps in our model. Stacked walls are a combination of two walls and can be selected as a wall type. They are also placed the same way as regular walls. When selected, we can also choose instant properties like the top constraint like we do with standard walls. Now let's select the wall and edit the type properties. In the structure of the wall, we will see that the wall is comprised of two different walls. By changing the offset, we can choose how these two different walls line up, and the effect will be seen in the sample preview. In this dialog, we can also choose which wall types we wish to be stacked. We can also edit the height of the bottom wall, and the top wall remains variable. By selecting OK, we can see these changes in our model. Now, let's edit the existing stacked wall and duplicate its type to create a new wall. We will call the new wall Brick on Concrete. Now we can edit the structure, 
choose a brick wall as the top wall and a concrete wall as the bottom one. Next, let's align the walls by choosing an offset and when finished, we can select OK to see our new wall type in the model. Since this wall type is simply a combination of two other types, a change to the other type will have an effect on the stacked type. For example, Let's add a sweep to the concrete wall type used in the stacked wall. Select the concrete wall used and edit its type. Now we will add a sweep to this type. In the model, we can see that by adding a sweep to the concrete wall type, it also appears in the stacked wall that uses the concrete wall type. After selecting a wall, we can also edit its profile. This opens a sketch of the wall's boundary lines. Using the drawing tools, let's create new boundary lines and then finish the sketch by selecting the green check mark. As you can see, we now removed the top corner of the wall. By creating a sketch within a wall's boundaries, we can create holes. We can also create holes using the wall opening tool. However, using this tool we can only make rectangular shapes. After selecting the wall we want the hole to be placed in, draw the rectangle, and the hole will appear.